What's up, Tiger fans? It's Morgan here with the Morgan Thomas Show, back again with another five-minute video about your Clemson Tigers. And uh, taking two days off, Saturday and Sunday. Now it is Tuesday, a couple of days after the Saturday game. Obviously, Clemson loses that game by one single point, 31-30, to the final game of the season, the rivalry game, Clemson versus South Carolina. I took some time to reflect on sat Sunday and just enjoy my Sunday with the family, but then also on Monday, listening in on some of the radio discussions. Obviously, some of the same things that were brought up during the um, you know, loser support group that we did or that I that I ran on YouTube on Saturday night. Um, a lot of just really hurt fans, hurt uh, players, hurt coaches. Um, I think one of the things that was key and telling for me, well, before I get into anything, I want to let you know that I'm, this is final thoughts. That's why I have it down here on the screen. Final thoughts. It's Tuesday. I'm going to move forward on Wednesday and get ready for the North Carolina game and the ACC championship game because this team has a lot more to play with. But just wanted to reflect on a few things and also get your thoughts in the comments as well. Going forward or looking, excuse me, looking back on the game, there are a few things that I can think of that really, really hurt Clemson that I wish didn't happen that I think Clemson could have avoided um, and, um, you know, were the ultimate doom for the Tigers in the game. Now, Quark mentioned one thing that is concerning to me is that Clemson beat South Carolina 30 to nothing last year and lost 31 to 30 this year. If you look at that on the outside looking in, you're saying to yourself, well, South Carolina improved by 31 points and Clemson did not improve. They stayed the same amount. And last year was a horrible year on offense. I will say that for the most part, this team has been able to improve or stay better than they were last year on offense. But now what's happened is, and we started to see it fall apart against Florida State. Even though it was a win, that Florida State game, you could hear it. I remember it perfectly with Kirk Herbstreet talking about DJ just missing a lot of passers, a lot, I mean, a lot of receivers, a lot of receivers wide open. He just wasn't even seeing them. And you could start to see that there were main tendencies they were leaning on really hard. And then as the year, as the season went on, those defenses, I feel like, had started to get film on Clemson's offense and realized, okay, this is what Brandon Streeter is doing with DJ, and this is what they're doing on offense, and it got worse as the year went on, as the rest of the season went on, when you played teams that actually had a pulse, uh, you know, not talking about Miami. So when I look at it, the first thing Dabo has admitted, admitted it, many fans have as well. Becky called in last night about it. Turnovers. That really hurts you. Specifically, the Phil Moffa turnover was huge. After coming after a safety, he follows it up with a, you know, as the as the joke is, the little Giants play and just lets it swing out of his arms. Unacceptable. It gave them huge momentum swing back in their favor, gave them short field position, and they were able to score quickly. Uh, again, another turnover at the end of the game. Clemson had an opportunity to finally get BT Potter in the game very late, two minutes, about 15 seconds to go in the game. And Antonio Williams, unfortunately, fumbles the punt return. Um, Dabo, you know, was highlighted by, by going over and, and telling him, hey, you know, this is not the defining moment of your career. I know that you had a lot of uh, anxiety and frustration to be let out against South Carolina with all of your recruiting issues, but, you know, this wasn't our day, and you'll get it. You'll have a, another opportunity. Turnovers big, of course. Field position huge. The punter for South Carolina pinned Clemson deep consistently, and it was just very difficult. It's been difficult for Clemson all year when they're faced right inside their end zone uh, within within the ten yard line, it's just more a lot more difficult for Clemson. They need space. Uh, when they get wedged into, you definitely have to run. It makes it even worse on them. They're already a run first team, but when you know for sure it's coming and you don't have a lot of room in the backfield, it makes it harder and it takes away your behind the line of scrimmage passes um, that Clemson likes to do to start their role. 
Play calling was huge. I know I'm coming close to time. I have so much to talk about, but I'm going to continue to go. Play calling was huge for me because there were scenarios where Clemson was in a key situation to um, to continue what they were doing successful, and they went away from it. For whatever reason, in the second half, they decided we're going to need one pass. When usually all season, they've been a second down run team, they switched to a second down pass team. They haven't had experience in that all season, and they haven't done that all season. I don't know why they went to a run-pass-pass pass scenario instead of a run-run-pass scenario, which is what they've done all season. They completely changed their playbook there. I don't know if they got forced into that or what, but whatever the play calling was was not good in the second half. I know everybody admits that. And let's take players aside, quarterback aside, wide receivers aside. The play calling was no good. It did not set Clemson up for success in the second half. You can talk about one player specifically. The quarterback is always the the um, the lightning rod, but those play calls were not good. Again, you also put a guy in a situation where you need a score right before halftime and they decide to run a deep ball with two with three out routes and DJ chooses the deep ball. Again, bad choice from DJ, but why are you giving a choice like that? You need to continue to move the ball. You've been able to move the ball against a team that cannot stop the run. Even South Carolina fans were turning around and tweeting and saying, why isn't Clemson running the ball? This is great. This is great for us. That you know, it it set up perfect for them in a one point win. Clemson's play calling just was not good around the halftime, was not good coming out of halftime, not good the entire second half. Again, it was a lot of situations where they were trying to set up the pass or set up the run with the pass, and it's just not what their bread and butter is. And that's confusing too. Again, not a ton of plays to the tight ends. Forced plays to the tight ends, not really there. Um, forced plays to certain players. They also motioned Antonio Williams a ton in the first half, had great success with it, and then stopped motioning in, in him until late in the fourth quarter. Um, you have to be able to do those things and, and keep the defense off balance, and they just weren't able to do that. Again, you know, I think those are things that Clemson will look back and be able to fix. I think the turnovers are things that they can be able to fix. I don't know about field position, really. Sometimes it's just how the game works out. But then lastly for me, and again, I know this is my this is why I'm going long because this is my final thoughts here. But quarterback, and you can say wide receivers all you want, but there is no, you, there is no scenario where I say, you remember backyard football? When you had your boys with you and you knew who you were throwing, I played backyard football. You know what? On third down, let's throw it to Big Al. Big Al was our big, tall receiver. He was fast. He could jump ball anybody. Big Al was your guy. When you needed that clutch play, he was your guy. Hunter Renfro, Clemson has had their guys. Hunter Renfro, Amari Rogers, T. Higgins. You know, why do, why do they call it third down and Renfro? Third and Renfro. Why do they call it that? Because he was there. He was your clutch guy. He was your go-to guy. Trevor Lawrence was going to go to him regardless. Deshaun Watson was going to go to him regardless. Those were your third down guys. T. Higgins became in one of those guys. Amari Rodgers eventually made it into that way. Bo Collins kind of did it last year late. But Antonio Williams is your third down guy. Antonio Williams is your best wide receiver. E.J. Williams has not played a ton. He had to sub in for Bo Collins, who was hurt who wanted to play but was injured, E.J. E. Williams is not your third down guy, and he was thrown to on third down in critical situations twice, and one was dropped, and one was a pressured ball that he couldn't catch anyways, and he also slipped. Again, I don't understand why you were targeting E.J. Williams in a third down and must-have scenario. That's your Antonio Williams scenario. I don't care if everybody knows you're throwing to him. He is good enough to get open even if everybody knows that. So to me, the decision-making by the quarterback, I understand it's the play call as well. But to me, if I'm the quarterback, I'm going to the guy I trust the most. Who is your third-down guy? That's who you go to. Maybe it's Will Shipley. Maybe it should have been running the ball. 
But to me, it's not Brandon Spector and it's not EJ Williams. And that was part of the issue there. Decision making by the quarterback. I showed you on Twitter, there was a, uh, a across the middle route. Everybody complains there's no cross the middle routes. Well, there's no cross the middle routes, but I mean, there, it, when there is one, he doesn't look at him. So it's decision making by the quarterback. You got to rely on your best players. And then there was something off with throws. I know everybody wants to talk about, you know, he, he must have had sweaty hands or maybe he got stepped on or maybe he had an injury or something happened after he hurt his hip when he got hit really hard. But DJ all year has been a much better player than last year. He has not been what we saw on Saturday. Whatever happened, he had ball slipping out of his hand where Sean McDonough was like, wait a minute, did, the, did that get tipped? And when they replayed it, it did not get tipped. The ball was slipping out of his hand. I have three recorded passes where it slipped out of his hand, and there's no explanation why it happened. I don't know if it was something, you know, like I said, perspiration to the hands, something getting to him. Maybe he needs gloves. I have no idea, but it was just so uncharacteristic of DJ. You can beat DJ up all you want, but he has been much improved from last year. He is a guy who is a reliable quarterback for the most part this year. He has to be a reliable quarterback. I mean, they've won 10 games, so can't say say to me he's not reliable, but that game against South Carolina was just horrible. He did not play the best game, and he will admit you he did not play his best game. It was his worst game probably of his career. I don't think the guy has ever had a game like that in Pee Wee, high school, middle school, college. That was the worst game that DJ has ever had. Hopefully he can bounce back from that. Maybe something going on with his grip of the football, but those balls where they were slipping out of his hands or even the one where he threw it down on the ground like he wanted to pump fake, you could say maybe that was confidence. I don't know. It's just something going wrong with the throws. You can also talk about the drops for sure, but we can also count you know, a couple of um, passes where he overthrew the guy. Antonio Williams had a wheel route where he was going to be gone. It was going to be a touchdown, and he missed him by five yards. So there's a lot of different scenarios and situations that run through my head. Again, I tried to reflect back and not speak out of uh, frustration, being a Clemson fan myself, uh, and be more you know, reflective of the situation. Again, I encourage you to put this behind you if you're a player, if you're a parent, if you're a fan, whatever it may be, a coach, whoever, I hope you're not watching this, but, you know, put this one behind you and let's get ready and go forward. <laughs> let's get ready and go forward to, um, you know, the next game that's up. This team still has a lot to play for. They still have the ACC championship game. They still have, um, you know, their bowl game. They still have, as Dabo Sweeney says, four of their five goals on the table. So as frustrating and mad as you can be and as many changes as you can want, this is the team that Clemson has. This is the this is the team that Clemson has. This is the team that Clemson is. And they are a very they are a good team. They're one of the they're one of the better defenses in the country. They're an average or slightly below average offense. They're not a terrible team. They're not a burn-it-all-down team. They're a team that still has a lot to play for. I will be in Charlotte on Saturday. I hope you will be as well. If you're not planning on going, maybe encourage other Clemson fans to go um, and be a part of it. And one final note I will say. A lot of people say, well, what about the recruits and the recruiting? You know, one game should never define your recruiting. All right. One game does not define Clemson as a team. One game does not define uh, your who, where you should go as a recruit. You should go where God tells you to go, where your family, where you fit, where where the environment, where you will be coached, where you will be developed, where you will be become from a young man to a grown man and be set up for success for the future, whether that be the NFL or further, whether that be Clemson or someone else. That's why you should make your decision. I think this is for South Carolina uh, recruits or Clemson recruits. You don't bank on one game um, and look at where Clemson has come from. If you say to yourself, well, how are we ever going to get recruits now? Look at where Clemson has come from. They landed DeAndre Hopkins, Sammy Watkins, CJ Spiller, um, Tony Stewart, DeAndre McDaniel. They landed these guys and they weren't national champions. You know, they landed Deshaun Watson. They weren't national champions. So just remember that Clemson has come a long way. They've worked their way up to the top. There's only one place to go when you're on top. 
hopefully not all the way down to the bottom, but I, I feel like that you can trust this staff to continue to make, make improvements as they go. Sometimes it's just the players you have and recruiting will solve that. Sometimes it's some of the decision makings that you make and, you know, going back and reassessing what you did and trying to learn from what you have done. Uh, but those are my final thoughts. I know a lot longer than five minutes, so I, I lied at the beginning about the five minute thing, but hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, if you think I'm completely off base, I understand, uh, or let me know if I missed anything. And if you like this video, make sure to like this video and don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel channel so you can stay up to date on all of my exclusive Clemson content I put out every single week.